For any training device to be any good, you actually have to use it. So you've got your pitcher's plank package, you open it and you're ready to go. The planks go together easy, the heel guides, no problem. But first time users might be a little hesitant to put the goal post in place because they don't know exactly where it's going to go. As an instructor to set up the goal post initially, I try to get a rough idea where my student is landing with her front foot and then back it off about a foot from that landing point. So many young pitchers are about five feet tall and we expect that they should be leaping forward about that same distance as they are tall. Another aspect of all this is what really happens with the trail foot. There are several different beliefs out there with regard to the follow through or what they call closing the gate, however you choose to describe the movement of the back foot. If you're an Ernie Parker or Lisa Fernandez advocate, then you bring your back foot up into the classic figure four and in this way the foot never really hits the goal post. Other finishing techniques have the trail foot generally staying fully in contact with the ground and then sliding up against the back heel of the front foot and then slightly off to the, the outside of the this is a technique that you advocate as an instructor or as an active pitcher, then you would set up the base plate and therefore the vertical post on the same side as your throwing hand. That way, if your trail foot doesn't come up and fully over the bar, at least your foot or ankle or shin will only impact the ball into the crossbar and that bar will just wiggle a little bit and then return to its fixed position. Now, there's even those who really don't advocate a high leap with the front foot. And there's also the camp that teaches to drag the rear foot and then immediately get into a good fielding position. They don't believe that the pitcher's plank would work for them. We're not here to advocate one finishing technique over another. We just want to ensure that you're fully aware of the capabilities of the goal post to withstand some impacts. But if your technique is such that your trail foot is dragging right through the goal post, it can be easily removed and you can still benefit from the heel guides just working on the plank by walking the plank and the shock absorbing capabilities of the crumb rubber. The goal post can also be used as a marker or reminder to stop short for certain pitches like a drop pitch. So we can shorten the length of our stride by say four or five inches. We can use the goal post, we put it out further, we bring it, we set it so that there's four or five inches from their normal stride length and thus you, you can pitch from there. So now that we're fully ready and we're all set up, I'll have Jen and Marissa and Brooke and Maddie demonstrate using it. Have fun girls. Now, it's no secret that everything that's done in virtually all of sports, at the center of it, are Newton's laws of physics. So it's imperative for instruction and training aids to be in concert with those laws of physics. At the center of optimum performance is balance and the use of the core muscles. So in an effort for young pitchers to be biomechanically correct, the most effective drills and training aids are those that do exactly that. We believe the pitcher's plank fits that to a T. Now, while the girls are throwing, I'll point out some things that are amplified in detail on our website with regard to surfaces. If you're on a turf surface, an artificial turf surface, there's no problem. Now, and if you're using it on a highly polished gym floor or tile flooring at your school, these planks will slide a little and you'll be actually surfing. But we found that the thin mesh area carpet underlay mats found at Lowe's and Home Depot are very good for providing skid resistance. And those same mats are good for surfaces like concrete and blacktop driveways, where there's actually so much gription, it can cause nubs to shear off the bottom with a repetitive force of pitchers landing on top. The thing about this is, if you're using it right, it'll become ingrained in muscle memory and you won't even know that it's there. And that's the whole idea, that you're able to go through a biomechanically correct motion, generating the greatest amount of power or velocity as is humanly possible. And ideally, you never hit the device. Or if you do, then the goal post just bounces back and resets itself. Or the heel guide tells you that you might be spinning out a little prematurely. Or you're not coming down fully in the center of the planks. Whatever the flaw in your motion, you'll get instant feedback without the pain and aggravation of having to reset some training aid. We, we hope, hope you've enjoyed, enjoyed this presentation, presentation and, and look, look forward, forward to having you as one of our newly satisfied, satisfied customers. customers.